Psalms chapter 9. To the chief musician upon Mutha Leban, Mutha Leban, a psalm of David. And I'm looking at the note here, and it's Death of the Sun. It's not a musical instrument, but a title of the song. The death of a song, son, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Well, that doesn't sound like something that you would start off as a title of death to a son. But Paul writes that in all things give thanks. Rejoice evermore. So, even when Jesus spoke to the disciples, he spoke about his final time, and they were all sad and all that, and he's like, why are you sad? I will be glad and rejoice in me. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Again, as we're nine chapters into the, into our hymnal of the Bible, there is no praise of man, there's no praise of, of anything on this earth, but the one praise that's in heaven, the Lord God. We're to sing unto him, we're to rejoice, we're to be glad, we're to be thankful, we're to tell others. It's all about God. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. Stating that God is against those who are against David. And my jury, the ones that were against David, were wicked. There wasn't one righteous man that fought against David. The ones that fought with David. They shall fall and perish at thy presence, God's presence. Listen, if you're in a battle and you got people against you and you're doing right, God will take care of them. And remember, like Job, God's in control of it all. God's allowing it. For thou, God, has maintained my right. Now, I don't think that's not boasting. That's not David sticking up and saying, me, you know, look at me, I'm right. No, from the first four verses, we see that the right is that David is doing right, and because David's doing right, people are against him, and all they that will live godly for Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution for us today. Because you're doing right, God will take care of you. Now that promise is not an Old Testament promise today. Paul always for did right. And Paul was beaten. He was, he was involved in a shipwreck. He had the, the Jews against him. He had the brethren against him. He had everybody against him. But he did right. Unlike David, Paul had even good people after him. But in the end, if all is done, God will do right. And those that do do right, God will bless and they will, they will be rewarded. And my cause, well, the cause of David has been God. Except for that one time he went for a walk out on the top of the castle. And those events that involve Bathsheba and all that, it has always been for God. That's David's cause. Thou God sat us in the throne judging right. And that's what God is. God is a right judge judging right. God will never do wrong. God will never be bribed. And we need to get that. Just because we're Christians, just because we're in a church, just because we do it in the name of Jesus, doesn't mean it's right. 
and we're going to get a big shock one day at the judgment seat of Christ when we find out what we've been doing. Some of the things we're doing is actually wrong, and God will join will judge against what's going on today. You read the, the Revelation chapter 3 about the lie of the seeing church age. They are so happy. They are so proud. They are so into what they are doing. And God says, you make me sick. There are people out there going to be, well, Lord, didn't we do this? And then we do that? And then it's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And everything they're going to do or have done is right. But they didn't do what God told them to do. There are going to be many, many people who are going to be judged from the time of Noah. And their judgment is going to be, why didn't you get in the ark? Thou, God, has rebuked the heathen. That's anybody who's not Jews. Now, David died along with the heathen. He had them in his military. He had them in his courts. He had them all around. If you take Jonah and uh, Peter, they don't want to have anything to do with them. Thou hast destroyed the wicked. Oh, so according to Psalms chapter 9, according to David, just because you're a heathen doesn't mean you're wicked. And when you read what Paul writes in the book of Romans, that God will judge those according to what knowledge God gave them. But in Romans chapter 10, we read that there is neither Jew nor Greek. Everyone today, no matter who you are, will be judged about your conduct and your what you've done with Jesus Christ. You may have been a heathen in the Old Testament and didn't mean you were wicked. Haman, not Haman, um, uh, what's the man there that, that was leprosy and did exactly what Elijah told him to do when he dug himself and got clean. And then from that point on, he served the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar got saved after the Lord got him. You say, was Nebuchadnezzar wicked because of what he did to Jerusalem? How could he have been? God told him to do it. God used Adolf Hitler to get the Jews back into the land. Now, which is worse? Now, a lot of people are going to faint at this and fall away from me in this comment. The Jews that wouldn't believe what God told them to do, or Adolf Hitler who did what God told him to do? Listen, there's another one coming up the Antichrist. He's going to destroy more Jews and make... Adolf Hitler looked like a pussycat. And he's of Satan. You know, Judas was wicked for, for doing what he did to Jesus. But it had to have been done. And Jesus said, Woe unto them the offenses come. Woe unto them that do it. The only change that we see in the, in the Bible is. Nebuchadnezzar got right. Belshazzar was wicked and a heathen, and he never got right. And he's in hell today. But there's a difference between a heathen and there's a difference between the wicked. The men of Nineveh got saved. They were, they were heathens. And yet Jonah was the wicked one. Both start and finish. He sat there underneath the tree watching for God to kill him while they were repenting in sackcloth and fasting. Thou, God, has put out their name forever and ever. We were the names of the ones that died during Noah's flood. I mean, we know names today, but what is it in eternity? Adolf Hitler will never be known in heaven. We'll never mention his name. 
No, we wouldn't mention anybody else who could have made adultery, murder, and lies, and you will unless he gets saved. You'll never hear Obama's name in heaven. You'll never hear Richard Nixon's name in heaven unless he got saved. And in the eternity, their names will never be mentioned again. As a matter of fact, even our names, the Bible mentions, are not going to be recognized in heaven. The Bible says for the Christians, we're going to get a new name. I guess our old names will disappear. Old our enemy. Now David turns to the enemy. Speaking about them, destructions are come to a perpetual end. And thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. The cities. The, all the people that were in them. There are people out there who destroy names. By killing, by murder, by whatever they do. And God will return the favor. Now you remember, to a Jewish person, a name in a, in a proper burial was something important to them. It was a shame for you to be out in the desert and die and, and waste away and never have a proper burial. And then have people think, well, whatever happened to such and such? I don't know what ever happened to him. But the Lord shall endure forever, and ever, and ever, and ever, eternity. The Lord is forever. For you morons, for the dates coming up, the Lord never had a birthday. And will never have a death day. He has prepared his throne for judgment. The great white throne. The judgment seat of Christ. There is coming a day for the saved and lost. There is judgment. And what I see people today as Christians. Right? Some of them I, I call to an order if they are. That's between them and the Lord. They don't realize there is a judgment for their actions. They think they are going to die. They are going to go to southern comfort heaven. Have a rocking chair and a fishing pole and a coon dog. And they don't realize they're going to be judged for everything they've done, everything they said, and every reaction gets a, a, a adverse action. Murphy's Law there. Not Mur no, the Law of thermo Thermodynamics. For every action, there is a reaction. For everything you do, unless you put it under the blood, 1 John 1, 1 9, you will be judged. The only thing God will not judge you of is what he's forgotten. And what he forgets is under the blood. Christian, you are coming to a judgment. You will be judged. And you will stand before Jesus Christ and give an account just because you're saved. And say, the Lord, first John, or oh, they say that, you know, you're not a sinner, you're a liar. And you make God a liar. Well, I never said I'm not a sinner. Your actions, what you do, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. I don't think there's ever been a time on this planet that the world has been judged in righteousness. Now we may have had a, a few good Christian judges somewhere. But 100% of the time, 100% of the people, saved or lost, will be judged in righteousness of God. And you won't be able to bribe this judge. You won't be able to put crocodile tears for this judge. And when he passes sentence, it will be a true sentence. With all the facts to be known. All the evidence will be there. 
He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. A righteous and uprightness judge. That's what's lacking today. That's why the correctional facilities are full and overflowing. The sentence against the work and it says the equality that it is not performed. And people say, hey, I can get away with it. And they get away with it. God will minister judgment to all. And there will be at least one charge of guilty for all, save their laws. We've all sinned, come to show the glory of God, the Bible says. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Friend, if you have oppressed somebody, you better get right with God, because the person that you oppress will call upon God. At the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. We are in a day and age today that bullying is a is a mass event in our schools. And the person that you bully will turn to God even lost. And call upon God for judgment. And even if both parties are lost and will go into a lake of fire, God will hear their pleas and God will judge each. And that which was to be found guilty will be judged by God. You don't know that in the great white throne judgment, even if you're lost, God is going to judge a righteous upright judgment upon all. All will have an opportunity to have all their cases brought before God. Save their lost. When all the books are done, when all the judgment is done, everybody will get their just desserts. Everybody will be rewarded to what their rewardings are. You, Christian, better have them under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine, at the great white throne judgment, having a lost man before he's pitched off into hell, point you out and say, that person I knew over there never told me. That person over there that, that, that I knew, I worked with, or is in my family, Looked and act and, and dress like the world I didn't even know. Now, God, as you sit on that white throne over there, you tell me if that's justice. And he said, What will happen then to that lost soul? This is what I think. God will point out, see that see that one over there? You see the crowns on his head? Now you see the one that you pointed out? You see no crowns? Justice has been served. You mean that person is not wearing crowns because he didn't tell me? You are correct. All right, God, you, you judge right. Now, some of you are going to find that's a hard saying. But I'm saved! Every action gets a reaction. The righteous God, the righteous upright judge, is going to make sure 100% of the people will get what judgment gets to them. Guilty or not guilty. And we can, I can go on and on and on and on, but we're doing just a chapter study, but just make you try to think here. Go in your own study about the judgment of God.
a refuge in times of trouble. Do you know when a Christian is in trouble and prays to God, even though he may not answer right away, or maybe a no? God is a refuge in, in times of trouble. Whenever David was in trouble, God was there. As you're going to see in Psalms, sometimes we feel God is not there, but He is. God hears all our prayers. Now, He only answers them in three ways as we move on. Yes, no, not now, but He hears our prayers. Too many Christians go running to God in refuge when times of trouble, but they don't go to God any other time. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Hosea 6, 1 and 2. The good verse. Just because God has not answered you or chose to say, not now, he has not forsaken you. The Bible says for a born again Christian, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. No one can pluck them out of my hand. Don't you think the Apostle Paul felt many times in his life that maybe God wasn't there? And maybe you'll be sitting in a jail cell as your comrade or as your brother in the Lord has just been killed. And maybe God just gives you a peace that you, you fall asleep and, and sleep soundly. Like Peter did in Acts. And the angel had to smite him to wake him up. And still he didn't believe until he got outside the gate. Peter's life was on the line. He was going to die after Easter. And Peter was asleep. You know why Peter was asleep? Because he ran to the name of the Lord in trust in the time of trouble. And God answered him with peace. He didn't get him out of jail right away. He did later. That was a peaceful answer and not now. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to the Lord, which dwell in Zion. Those are in Jerusalem. It's the Jews. Declare among the people his doings. Oh, look at that. When was the last time you had a church service where the entire night was dedicated to testimonies? And I don't mean testimonies about me, myself, and I. I mean testimonies that were about and what God has done for them in their life. And I don't mean a testimony that, oh, I needed some money, I walked into the mailbox, and boom, there's that checks from every taxpayer in America. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that the Lord has done. When have you declared among the people his doing? When have you told your co-workers? When have you told your friends? When have you told your family about what God has done for you in your life? You know, Paul told his personal testimony three or four times. What have you told people? I've given my testimony bits and pieces and whole several times. When he, God, make his inquisition that is a search or, in, or inquiry for blood. He remembers them. He forgets not the cry of the humble. 
God will call everything and all the evidence. There won't be anything lacking in judgment. Everything you've done, everything that has been accomplished in your life. There will never be a retrial. You don't need a retrial. And you can never appeal God for what he has sent us. Because he's upright and he's righteous. You can never proclaim before God or about God that you were given injustice. That because uh, whatever your your conduct, your place of employment, the place where you come from, your ethic and all that, whatever the junk, whatever the excuses be. As I went to a motor vehicles court one time, and I sat there and listened to him, this colored guy went up before the judge and said it was a black thing that he, no, it's not a black thing. I guarantee that cop had pulled over many people, all different sexes, all different uh, categories and uh, countries and ethnic groups. But you'll never be able to say that about God. God will put everything in the balance. You know, God knows exactly where Jimmy Hoffa is. God knows truly how and why Elvis Presley died. God knows the conduct of Michael Jackson. God knows about you and is keeping books. And weighs everything out. When he, oh wait a minute, uh, he remembers them, he forgets not the cry of the humble. Those who have been afflicted. God will remember. You may, that person that afflicts you may get away with it on this life. But not in judgment. Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. God will remember the cry. You may say, God, that person died and you didn't do nothing to him. He lived a lavish life. He kept on doing it. What is wrong with you, God? And God would speak to us and say, it ain't over. How can I explain? How can I get into you people that I love out there? How much judgment is going to be? Can I say 100% of what you hear, of what you say, what you smell, what you see, and what you touch? I can't even get into how much God's going to judge us as sin as sinners who are saved by the blood well our sins that are under the blood still that which is not under the blood will be judged you know you could go out and witness and pass out tracks knock on doors and say hey I did a good job and when you get to the judgment seat of Christ the guy said I'm not going to reward you for that what do you mean I went knocking on doors well, your pastor had to tell you 45 times that week. He called you every single day. He called you six times to make sure you were going to be there at Saturday at 10 o'clock. He practically had to tie you up and handcuff you and get you to go. I love a cheerful giver. I am not going to reward you for that. How about... Well, Lord, I passed all these tracks, and I did this and that. What about that one track I told you to pass that guy, or that you passed that guy? Which one? That big, mean motorcycle guy there. Well, Lord, he was going, yep. He disobeyed me. That, not giving that guy a gospel track is just as bad as Adam taking the fruit and eating it. It's called rebellion. And that's what's going to be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And... The great white throne judgment for those are lost. Have mercy upon me. That's what our cry should be. O oh Lord, consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. 
Marvel not the world hates you. If you're not getting a hard time from the world, you're not living a Christian life. I'm going to put my foot down because that is scripture. And I have been given a hard time by some church and Christians. And according to the verses in the Bible, I don't think they're saved. Mom will not the world hates you. And the things I've done for Christ and the word of God and they don't like it. Thou, God that lifteth me up from the gates of death. Means they want them dead. They wanted Christ dead. And Jesus said, and when I die, the world will be pleased and you will be sad. But rejoice, your sadness will be broken forth into joyfulness because you're going to see me alive and well. Well, if you're a Bible-believing, born-again Christian, done what you write, and if you die on this planet and you have a funeral, I guarantee there will be some people at your funeral, not because they liked you, because they're happy you're gone and wanted to make sure it was you. And they'll go report back to their friends or their church or whoever and say, Yep, I saw the body, I saw the name, he's dead. Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. Listen, one thing about that Constitution is that it's keeping some of us Christians alive. I'll give it that much credit. But then again, when the church was persecuted in the book of Acts, it grew. Where do you see the church growing today? Oh, mega churches. <laughs> yeah. That I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughters of Zion. Has God prevented you from death? Has God given you victory over your enemies? You are to go in the gates of the door of Zion among your brethren, Christians for us, Jews for David, and you are to speak forth and say, this is what God has done in my life. It's that testimony that we saw in verse 11 declare among the people his doings. You are to comfort one another, the Bible says in the church. When somebody's got troubles and you've been through them alike, you ought to put their arms around and say, listen, I'm a survivor. This is what God's done for me. And this is what God will do for you. I will rejoice in thy salvation. Now, when David died, where did he go? He went to Abraham's bosom. Why did he go to Abraham's bosom? Because Christ has not shed his blood, did not die, was not buried, and did not rise from the grave. And when Christ died, then the Old Testament saints went into glory. So David dying at the point he died, he went to Abraham's bosom. What would be the salvation David speaking about here? Jesus Christ. Thy salvation, thy God's salvation is Jesus. When the Old Testament saints went to Abraham bosom, they, it, I'm not going to say it not, wasn't complete, but it wasn't finished yet until Christ came. They were still looking for the Messiah. They were still looking for the blood. And when Christ left hell, walked across that gulf, and said to the dying thief, how you doing, buddy? And that dying thief testimony, I guarantee to everybody in his book, wake up! Here he is, the king! He died with me! And he said he was going to come! And God, Jesus Christ, grabbed that paradise in his bosom and blew him right up to heaven. That salvation is Jesus Christ. 
the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. A pit is a trap. Here you dig a big hole, you put branches and stuff on it, so when somebody, an animal comes walking by, it falls in it and can't get out. It's a trap. Hell's not a trap. Man did not dig hell. God made hell, the Bible records in Matthew. Must be rejecting the Bible. In this net. Well, you know what a net does? It catches you. Which they hid in their own foot. Take it. They go out there and put a net out there to catch. And they get caught in their own cells. Who are they trying to catch? Those that do right. Those that, that love the Lord. They try to catch you. <clears throat> They try to keep, catch each other too. Raising rates, raising rental, raising how much a, a stupid piece of junk car is, and not telling you everything about the car. That once you drive it off, three weeks later it's going to break down. That's a trap and a snare to get you to give them money. The Lord is known by the judgment which he judges. Excuse me, execute it. We learn about God the judge. He will execute judgment. Do not think you're going to stand up and not face the judge. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus Christ stood before a judge, don't you think you're not going to? Jesus Christ stood before two judges and both of them a, mo a total of five times said, I find no fault in him. Jesus Christ knows what it's like to stand before a judge. You didn't think about that, did you? And he did. The wicked is a snare is snared in the work of his own hand. The wicked are going to get themselves tied in their own knot. The more that God lets them speak, the more God brings out the, the evidence of their life, the more it's going to hang them. It better be the blood of Christ today. Higigayan means meditation sila you want a perfect example of verse six, 16 Haman Esther 7 9 and 10 he built those gallows for Mordecai and guess who hung on them the wicked the wicked well who's the wicked Satan I know he's speaking about uh, uh, men and brethren and the wicked he said in verse 5 2 Thessalonians 2 8 says the wicked is the Antichrist the wicked shall be turned into the grave no the wicked shall be turned into Hades no H-E-L-L -L. And all the nations that forgot God You know what America is doing? She's forgetting God She wants to get rid of God She's asking to get rid of God She don't want us Christians around Thank God there's still some people that are downtown That enjoy us being down there but the wicked don't want us there. The Jews don't want us there. Remember the Jews, Paul says, are an enemy to us. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. So God's going to take care of the needy. He's going to help them. It may not be on this planet.
What will a needy person need if he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior in New Jerusalem? Nothing. See, God took care of him. Well, he didn't get a 14 course dinner down here and didn't get McDonald's every lunch period and didn't get pancakes and sausage and bacon for breakfast. Where are you promised that? All your stupid Democrats will give you that kind of trash. And they make somebody else pay for it. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. And Jesus said, I forget it. Blessed are the poor. And I forget what he says after that. A poor man that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior, what will he need in New Jerusalem? What about the poor widow woman that uh, went out, gathered two sticks? She was going to make a meal for her son, and they were going to die, and she helped Elijah. What about that poor woman? She's in a place today right now, she'll never have to gather two sticks and worry about dying. God took care of her. Now, she may have troubles and tribulations and problems on this earth, but this earth is not good. Life is not good. Arise, O Lord, for judgment. Stephen, Acts chapter 7. Come get us. Let not man prevail. A man's not going to prevail. One day the last man is ever going to be born and the last man is going to die and that's it of man. Sinful man. Man that is that from Adam. And then he's talking about letting man not prevail too in battles and conquer. And Listen, the wicked is always going to exceed on this planet because there's more wicked than there are righteous. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight, and they will be. Put them in fear. Well, I can guarantee they will fear God when they stand before God, the great white throne judgment, but then it's too late. How many people in the great white throne judgment say, Lord, I believe you, I believe you, and too late. O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Selah. You know, some people think they're God. There's a guy out there on, on talk radio. Man, his poop don't stink. And, and he's called by God. And, and he can't even get over drug pills. I mean, dietary pills. I'm sorry. You're a sinner. You need Jesus Christ. I wonder what happened if somebody went to that guy and said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. I don't know what his stupid answer would be. Since he's got all the answers and he doesn't, and his answers don't do nothing for this country. He has not yet helped this country, but he's got all the answers. Screams his calls, and when they know what they're calling about, his little people that he pays looks it up on the computer and he talks about the president using a teleponder he uses a computer that the people in the booth say all right say this if he's so smart why is he going to tell his people well play back this track number something why don't he play back the track because he ain't in control there are people i think there that they are of the of who our president of that nation right now thinks he's the American of all Americans and you ain't going to do nothing but what I tell you to do. Wait till he stands before God. And God says, listen, I gave only, I don't know how many presidents are, but how many presidents have there been? I put you in that office for a particular reason. What did you do for my name? Nothing. There are people ahead of big corporations like J.C. Penney and God's going to go up to him at the judgment seat of Christ and say, Mr. Penny, what did you do for me? I gave all the saints days off of church. Right? Okay. What did you do with your money? I hope he gave it to missionaries. I don't know. I have never heard that story. Everyone's going to give an account. Everyone's going to stand before God. 
And there are some people out there that think they are it of all it. Marines are going to stand before God. Where are the Marines? Where are the elite? And God's going to be like, jump in the lake of fire. Try to get out of that. Oh, I fought this battle in such and such war, and I hung the American flag in dignity. Yeah, I put you in that battle for you to turn to my son, Lord Jesus Christ, as your mother sat there and prayed for you, and you went about and did what you want to do, and now it's going to hell. And I said, Adolf Hitler thought he was somebody. You imagine Adolf Hitler standing before Jesus Christ as a Jew and have to give an account of what he did to all Jesus' brethren? You know what I think? I don't know how many Jews Adolf Hitler killed, but can you imagine Jesus reading off all the names? We got eternity. Wouldn't you have to give an account for everything? Mr. Olive Hitler, take a seat. This is going to take a while. We're number one. We're number one. And God's going to say, we? And he's going to lay it out as this chapter is judgment. And all men will be put down. And I can go on with names and names and names and people and people who today think they are somebody. And you know what? You go to the bathroom just like everybody else does, according to your sex. You have blood running through your veins just like we do, and it's red. It's one of the several blood types. And all God has to do is say, I want my spirit back. Take the breath out of your nostril, and you're dead, and they're going to bury you. If you don't get burned or whatever, anything else. You're just a man. You're going to die. And the Bible says, for all have sinned, come to show the glory of God. That's what man is. He's a sinner. And God will judge all. And you need to realize how serious the judgments are and what God is going to call for the judgment. Everything. Without excuse, without anything left out. And the only thing that won't be judged is a Christian that put it under the blood. That won't be judged. Everything else will.